Welcome everybody and once again welcome to Martin. Martin would you introduce yourself? Yeah certainly so I'm Martin Frank and I'm a product manager and I work at a, a cloud software company. Good so um, on one of our previous videos we talked about our community portal and how customers interact and specifically around ideas. So I want to pick that up because I know what you do with some of those customers that have had great ideas and, and they've they've got lots to contribute um, is we work with them in a more detailed way. And I'm keen to understand then how we get to an idea to production um, and something, you know, people might refer to as beta testing. So tell me how that works. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the idea portal is a, is a great source for having customers engaged in your new products early or your new features um, early. So if I was to pick up an idea off the portal and I know that's going to become a feature we build, um, I'd actually normally engage with uh, some, depending on how many people have voted on it, but some of that customer base early and start discussing my ideas before we've even written any code. Uh, this is where we're thinking, this is how we're thinking about implementing this and get their early feedback on that. And then as that progresses to the point, we've got something that we can release. And as covered in previous videos, we released uh, weekly and in some areas of our product, even daily. Um, as that product progresses and we get to a stable enough point that we, we would consider it beta, I can then engage that customer base and broadcast it a bit more widely internally and say, have we got any customers that are interested in trying this out? And normally if you go directly to someone that raised an idea, the answer is nearly always yes, because they're so keen about it. They were keen enough to put an idea on a portal. They're definitely keen enough to try out your new product. Um, so that's really how we get to that beta stage. We, we normally use the ideas portal or through our, our CSMs and other kind of ways of talking to our customers that we find these customers that are willing to get involved early, try these features out. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's worked really well for us. Mm -hmm. So CSM, the customer success managers. So again, that, that's another video actually where we talked, I thought with a, one of our success managers about monthly, typically monthly or quarterly um, sessions with each customer. But I know as a customer, I could go into our community portal and I actually see a section there with um, early releases and beta programs running. And as a customer, I could go in and say, wait a minute, I'd love to be involved in that. So that's something I could click through. And if that was one of the programs you were running, so you get to find out about that. I mean, do we have a limit? How many typically how many customers can be involved in one feature change? Yeah, so you're right, you would be able to find out about through the portal. So every major release we do, the marketing releases, we tend to announce the uh, early access or beta products that are running to just try and raise awareness that, hey, these things are going on. If you're interested, come and talk to us. Um, but yes, there would be a limit, and it really depends on the product you're releasing. So if you're releasing something um, fairly small that maybe doesn't have quite as much maintenance cost in the beta stage, we'd probably be able to reach that to, to many more. Um, but I'll try to give you an example. We might release a product in beta that still has some uh, manual provisioning activity on our side. That's why it's beta. It's not ready for the rollout to the masses. And uh, and in that case, we'll probably release to a limited number of customers so that we can maintain the support they need in that early beta stage. Um, it might also be that they need more support on using the tool because it's not reached its final uh, destination and the kind of well-rounded UI, well-rounded experience and there might be some quirks in it. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's, it's, well, it's always limited. The amount is limited depends on the, the product that we're releasing. So this is the kind of innovation end of what we do. And if people, you, I know you are, but you know, the audience familiar with the technology adoption lifecycle curve, you will know that before you've crossed the chasm, if you're that kind of organization, you love it that there's no documentation actually. You love it that it's leading edge. You're fine with having to, download something that maybe didn't work quite as well because that's the kind of organization you are i actually want to spin this around a little bit because um on behalf of of people that might be thinking well how does this work let's say i'm the kind of customer that doesn't want to be involved in early stuff that is really i wouldn't say risk averse but but you know i mean i want stability i want to take something in this area of my business that is mature all the training is there, the videos are there. How can I make sure I don't get involved? And and I'm kind of hinting at things like account. I mean, how do I not see this change yeah. when it's tenant? 
Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have many customers that uh, meet that description and it's absolutely fair. Their business is critical to what they do and uh, they want to get stuff when it's when it's stable and that's completely understandable. Um, and, and although we release, as I mentioned, kind of every week or even every day in some areas of the product, um, everything is done under, we use a kind of toggling system so we can hide features from customers. So we'll release it, but we'll put it in a passive mode so no one can, can see it. So we can choose when we want to turn that on for an individual customer. Um, we can we flick that toggle on, that feature becomes available and they can start using it. And it goes from this passive mode to an active mode for them. Um, and that actually is interestingly what led to the, the free major releases that we do, the free marketing releases, was because we have many customers that don't want very small changes coming out all the time. They would rather batch that up and uh, roll out the training. And when we do a marketing release, it comes with lots of documentation, lots of videos, lots of quizzes to help bring everybody's knowledge up of how the product's gonna change before it goes live. Um, so we're, we're sympathetic to both. We desperately want people to engage with us early so they can help us innovate and build the best product possible, which the beta and early access gives us. But we understand the need of some customers for that stability. And we use the major releases to, to achieve that. And I think, you know, it's those account toggles as well. And, and again, to, to provide some more clarity to people listening to this, um, even though, and we're not alone in providing multi-tenant software, um, which actually means it's the same code for all customers on all our platforms across the globe. And I think customers organizations then would say, okay, but doesn't that mean everyone has the same thing? but they don't because it's configurable. So customers can't edit the software. Um, you know, we don't do custom software development, but almost everything we do is configurable and or hidden by toggles. So even in those marketing releases, I think I'm correct, Martin, in saying, just because there are 50 new things coming along in this summer release, um, I know some of my customers might say, still, I don't want them. Yeah. Until there and then i want to actually test them in my sandbox before even though you've tested them martin i know you have and the team <laughs> has i have a process that says i need to put it in a sandbox and test it first so even then even when it's released those toggles still apply don't they yeah that's absolutely correct and um anyone that would want to test in a sandbox we could release there ahead of the major releases there are and and because everything is kind of configurable uh, they could opt out. We do have, of course, some changes that we don't allow people to opt out of. So if we're making a security improvement to the platform, that will mm -hmm. go to everybody and they won't they won't get a choice to that. Um, and we have some features that are just so core, maybe an addition of um, a, a small enhancement to an existing product, and we won't allow them to opt out of that. But we're very sympathetic and we try and look for that balance. And it definitely is a balance. You can't just constantly force change upon people and uh, expect them to react in their business but at the same time we, we we try and strike that balance of progressing our products and not uh taking on too much cost for the complexity because the more configuration the more complexity that you bring into your product so it's definitely a I, that we have to walk yeah and i think that and just to close out on the conf to reconfirm that balance because i think for some organizations that we talk to um some of them almost expect to get an entire right of refusal or entire ability yeah. to say that's in or that's out of a product when actually there, there are now obviously thousands of customers using our solution um yet at the same time it's reasonable to expect them to have some say and it is about striking that balance um in a cloud-based multi-tenant world which is reality the way most of the world is these days um so martin fabulous talking with you today Andrew, thank you, Paul.